Portable operating is probably the most fun part of ham radio to me. And in this video, I'm going to show you an antenna that maybe you could get some benefit from. It's made by Chameleon Antennas. It's the LEFS 8010. This antenna is made for 10 through 80 meters. It's a multiband end fed antenna that's not supposed to need an antenna tuner. And during this video, I'm going to go out and do some testing with this. I'm going to go set up the antenna in a couple of different configurations. The horizontal NVIS setup, the sloper setup at multiple heights at a location, and using the 80 meter section so that you have a full 130 feet. The antenna out of the box is 10 through 40 meters with the 63 feet that the antenna is. It's got the center insulator, which is the line winder, so it's multi-purpose there, and the SO239 for the antenna connection. Antenna itself comes off of the center insulator and is 63 feet long. When you add the extension onto this antenna, the 67 additional feet, now the antenna is good for up to 80 meters. In the manual, it shows a frequency graph that this thing is matched really good for the ham bands, both for the 10 through 40 version and the 10 through 80. So we're going to set this antenna up at different heights, two different configurations, and do some comparisons and see what this antenna can actually do. Now for these tests, I've been using different radios and different power levels, but I've been using battery power for the duration of all my tests. Now for this test, I'm going to be using the antenna down here at this park, and I've got trees all around me over here. So I'm gonna take the antenna, the feet point, up in the air, the 25 feet that it needs to be, and I'll try varying heights of that. And then I'm gonna take the two configurations, both the sloper going from the tree out to the field, and then after that, test the invis configuration, which is taking the uh, end of the end fed antenna out in a horizontal position. What I'm gonna be using to get the antenna up in the air up in the tree is the arborist weight line. The arborist throw weight and then the rope that goes attached to it. When I'm in a park like this, I'm less likely to take something that's like a projectile launcher. People get a little bit weird about that out in public. So for now, we're going with the arborist throw line. And to make this a little more fun for me so I know what um, level that I'm at, what height I'm at, I've used some pink duct tape with marker points and I've marked different heights on it. So whatever is on the ground tells me how high it is up in the tree. And the marker positions start at 35 feet, 30 feet, 25 feet, 20 feet, and 15 feet. More than likely, the lower the tree is what you're going to be stuck with. For this video, I'm testing out the Chameleon LEFS 8010 antenna. This is the bigger brother from the LEFS that was only 40 through 10 meters. Now, Chameleon did provide me with this antenna and the feed line choke for review. And when you get this antenna out of the box, the package that it comes with, the extension line and the antenna main line itself come coiled up and they have tie wraps around it. But since I've used this antenna a number of times, I've wrapped it around its line winder that comes with it. Okay, running this first test, I'm at 25 feet in the air, and the end of the end fed antenna is out as far as it can go for the 63 feet that it is. For this test, I'm using the AA230 zoom. So let's go band for band here. Because this is 40 through 10 meters, uh, let's check 40 meters. With the antenna up in the tree, and there may be some interaction with the tree because the feet points right up in the leaves where, you know, it is what it is. If I can show this on here, let's just see. So the lowest point, it's 1.2 to 1, which is 6.53 megahertz. The bottom of the band is about 1.75 to 1, and the top of the band is two, about 2 and a quarter to 1. Let's get on to the next band. All right, 20 meters. Let's see what this is. All right, so that's pretty good. I mean, basically, it's a little over 1.5 to 1 for the entire 40-meter band, and that's pretty good. All right, 15 meters. The highest point at the end of the band it's about two to one. And the lowest end is uh, about one and a half to one. I really only care about the lower end of 10 meters, so let's see what that does. So it's about two to one, almost the entire portion of the band that I'm interested in. And that is 28.3 to 28.8. For this part of the test, it doesn't appear that being 25 feet off the ground and lowering the end of the antenna makes much difference at all. So now we're going to lower this part of the antenna down. The feed line is going to go from 25 feet down to 15 feet, and let's see what that looks like. And that made me have to take the far end of the wire antenna out another five or six feet so that it's stretched out at a sloping angle. 
And now we're looking at the lower end of the band at 1.75, and the high end of the band is 1.5. So it's a better match being lower to the ground. So now if I do a band sweep with the antenna only being at 15 feet, it's significantly more improved, meaning I've got a better match for the radio. It doesn't mean I'm gonna get out farther, but at least I've got a better match for the radio. I lowered the antenna down to 10 feet off the ground and then extended the end of the wire out enough so that it's stretched out fully, like you would for a sloping antenna. So I'm 40 meters, it's 1.7 to one, roughly, and the rest of the bands, 20 meters, 15 meters, and 10 meters, are all just under 1.2 to one. So the lower I get for these bands, the better the match for the radio. So this is just an indication that you aren't gonna need a tuner if you're planning on putting up an antenna this high off the ground. The 10 feet's not very high and you might be in a spot where that's all you've got. So now you know that's how that is. All right, for this next part of the configuration or the test that I wanna do, I'm gonna hook up the extension. This is what makes the LEFS 1080 be an 80 meter antenna. So on the end of this antenna, is a loop with a carabiner and a bullet connector. So this bullet connector just plugs into the other end of the antenna. We've got a support ring with this little loop and there's a little uh, clamp here to hold it all together. And the other end of the bullet connector is here. And I like the idea, it's pretty straightforward, pretty simple design. You just take this carabiner and snap it into the ring like that and you're good to go. Now when you hook these two bullet connectors which would not hold your connection if you were just trying to get your antenna to stay that way, like for a link dipole. That gets pushed in and now, when I'm holding onto this antenna to pull it out to its end, it's gonna be as strong as the rest of this thing. So now that we've got like 126 feet of wire out there, the first leg is 63 feet, and I think it's also another 63 feet out to that end. That's a lot of tension, 126 feet hanging on the tree, pulling from one end to the other, so we have a fix for that. So I've got a 10 stake, and some paracord, some nano cord, I guess. And we're gonna pull the end of this electric post and give it some strength, give it some ability to pull itself back. So at this end of the electric fence post that's, that's holding all that weight of the wire that's back there, I'm gonna use just a standard old tent stake and some more paracord or nano cord and pull that post back and that'll give it the strength that it needs to pull that wire a little bit more tight. I'm not looking for this thing to be Johnny Bowstring tight. I just want the center of that antenna to be off the ground. You know, I should show these kind of things more often, but what I like to do here is take this string and make a quick loop out of it so that I can wrap that around whatever it is that I'm doing. In this case, I'm just going to make this loop over itself and just Tie it around. Now that's a removable knot, but it's also secure enough to hold this thing. So on 80 meters, it looks like the low end of the band is two and a half to one. The center of the band is 1.2 to one. And the end of the band is also another two and a half to one. So significant dip in the middle of the band. And for 40 meters, it's looking like the bottom end of the band is one and a half to one. And about 7.225. That's the lowest part of the band. It's one to one and at the high end of the band, 1.2 to one. That's pretty significant. You're definitely not gonna need a tuner on 40 meters. 20 meters, we're looking at almost one and a half to one. It looks like it's closer to 1.4 to one. And at the high end of the band, where the best match is, the upper portion of the band, is 1.2 to one. I think that's significant. So again, if you don't have a tuner, this is gonna work amazing for you. So 15 meters is about 1.7 to one at the low end. And at the high end of the band, it's about 1.2 to 1. On 10 meters, we're looking at 1.5 to 1 at the low end of the band. And the lowest point that it gets is 28.68, which is, I'm not probably never going to go any higher than that for most activations. And that turns out to be 1.2 to 1. Again, that's really good. So for this test, I've raised the antenna up to 25 feet, as per what the manual says. I took the other end of the antenna out and repositioned it so that it's not sagging again and uh, pulled back on the orange stake. Now the readings on here took the new readings and without going through each individual one, they're all super low again. 80 meters is probably the highest at just under two to one. And that's not bad actually. Everything else is one and a half to one or less. With something like this, you can put up in a tree. You don't need an antenna tuner, just that radio and you're good to go. So now that I've gone through all these tests, 
I really want to get this on the air because if you go through this much effort to get an antenna up, it's just the right thing to do. So I'm going to be using my KX2, and we're going to check some of the bands and see if we can hear anybody, make any contacts. So you can see the radio really loves this antenna, whether I use the tuner or not. There's not much on 40 meters right now, but I know the antenna's plugged in or the antenna tuner would be going nuts. So the match is really good. Good report from uh, California. You're five and eight uh, up to nine. Taking us nine into Vienna, uh, Music City, Vienna. So back over to you. Okay, thank you very much. Seventy three, and you take care. Ocean Echo three, Denmark, Italy, America. K seven, Sugar Whiskey, QRP. Three zero XDZ five and nine. This Gulf for you, nice to meet you. Hi Dave, good to hear you. You're five and nine, fifty nine. My name is Rob. R O B Rob. All right, so that was the test at this location with the antenna at different heights and using the 80 meter extension and not having it on there. Uh, DX was really good. You could hear everybody really loud. So I'm encouraged by that, the fact that this thing can hear really well. I wasn't expecting a lot to be able to get out because I've only got 10 watts with the KX2 and these are not. this is not really a good location to be at for getting out. I need to probably be somewhere up higher in the mountains. Well, if this part of the video was helpful for you, let me know in the comments down below if you'd like to see this kind of a test to let you know what's going to work for you before you get out in the field so you can know what gear you don't have to take and what you can get away with. All right, the antenna is now in the Envis configuration, and that is the feed point is up 25 feet in the air here, and then down field, I've measured off uh, 25 feet up in the tree. This tree happens to be in the right spot for me, so both ends are 25 feet up in the air. I've used my Arborist throw weight to get the line up over the tree in each case. 25 feet's not a big deal, so that was an easy toss. In this configuration, I am using the 80 meter extension, so it is the 80-10 setup from the way the book says. And because the tree supports are that strong, I'm able to use the uh, antenna in a flat top configuration. Now, based on the manual, this says this is the Invis configuration, and we're gonna test that out. The trees are just about the right distance. I mean, we're talking five feet apart, so there couldn't have been a better spot for me to do this test. Now, as far as orientation goes, I'm set up with the far end of the antenna with a northwest and then southeast configuration. So I'm headed towards Europe. And this time I'm going to try this antenna after we do some of the readings, see if I can get any DX this morning. Okay, here goes the first test with the antenna up in the Invis configuration. And let's see what we get. Now, unfortunately, the graphs didn't save as I was recording these as I went along. But the end result for me was that it wasn't a whole lot different than using this antenna in the sloper configuration. Now on 80 meters, we're starting off at the low end of the band um, at 3 to 1. And when it exits the other end of the band, the high end of the band, it's also 3 to 1. In the middle of the band is 3.77. That's what it shows here at 1.42 to 1. Now on 40 meters, at the beginning of the band, I'm looking at just under 1.4 to 1. The lowest part of the band, the center, is 1.23 to 1, which is pretty good. That's a 7.180. And of course, exiting the band at the top, it's just under 1.5. Again, that's totally doable without a tuner. Now for 20 meters, just starting at the low end of the band, I'm starting at just under 2 to 1. And exiting the band at about 1.3 to 1. Now for 15 meters, we start at the lower end of the band at 1.7 to 1, and we're exiting at 1.2 to 1. And for 10 meters, we're looking at uh, entering the band at about 1.6 to 1. And at the end of the band for me, which is going to be 28.83, which is as high as I'd even go for 10 meters, that's about 1.2. Having your antenna lowered like this isn't an optimal setup, but it's a pretty common thing when you're used to setting it portable out in the field. So now I'm going to pull this back up to 25 feet in the air. We're going to stretch this out to make it a good flat top. And we're going to try hooking up the radio. This time I brought the 857 and a battery so we have some power to get out. So for 80 meters, it's too late for me now. Everybody's gone, it's too late in the day. The noise level is S7, which isn't too bad. I'm used to being a little bit higher. And uh, now we're gonna try 40 meters to see if there's, how that's gonna turn out. So that's interesting on 40 meters. The noise level is S1. That's pretty awesome. I don't know if that just means I'm not gonna hear a lot of signals, but to start off with, it's a good sign. Yeah, 
I, I don't even look at it. Uh, I hear guys talking about it now, but... <laughs> and you don't think they'll have it back on till this afternoon. So, uh, got no Brian today. Whiskey Charlie 6 Delta Relay. This sounds like a big noise floor, but it's not even registering. It's, it's below S1. Kilo 7, Sierra Whiskey. A Kilo 7, Sierra Whiskey. Kevin, is that you? It is. Thanks for helping me with that. Hey, thanks. It's 7 3. Foxtrot Lima Golf. Thanks. Uh, you're uh, coming in uh, intermittently really good into Caldwell, Idaho. Uh, I guess the band's up and down today. All right, so that's pretty cool. So this antenna seems to work really well, at least for conditions today. I'm really impressed with the noise floor being so low. And where I'm at, I'm at this park where electrically, it's always been known to me how noisy this place is. All right, the little rainstorm that has passed. I got the gear back out and I'm on 20 meters and we're gonna see if we can make some more contacts. My name is Brian, my owner's number is 11415. I will be acting as that control for this session of the Ole Miss 20 meter So that's S7 right now. And if I change the frequency, it goes down to S1. So I know the antenna is working. I don't know how far it's working, but it is working. Yeah, who's the other part to park? I'm not sure I'm gonna be able to copy of this hour. Oscar 4, Tango, X-ray, November, got you, you're about a 5 by 2 got it, uh, uh, Kilo 2384 in Maine, all right, uh, 73, you have a great afternoon, enjoy your time out there in the park as well. There we go, Whiskey 9, Sierra Bravo Echo, good afternoon, 5757 into Kilo 0816 in Texas, over, Kilo 7, Romeo, Charlie, Romeo, QRZ. K7, Sugar Whiskey. Kilo 7, Sierra Whiskey. Kilo 7, Sierra Whiskey. Good afternoon. Nice signal. 5-9 into Kilo 0816 in Texas. Over. Yeah, fantastic. Uh, you're also, you're a 5-9 plus here into Utah with this uh, test antenna. So uh, thanks for your activation in 7-3. Hey, thank you a lot for the call. Uh, I do appreciate it. You have a good one. 7-3. K7RCR, QRZ. KC9, Romeo Foxtrot, parks on the air, QRZ. Kilo 7, Sierra Whiskey. Kilo 7, Sierra Whiskey, uh, please copy about a 5 by 7 into park K4324, over. Yeah, thank you for that park. On the peaks, you're 5-9, five, 5-9 nine, five, nine here into Utah. So uh, thanks for that park, and you have a great activation. That static sounds really loud, like it's a high S level, a high noise floor, but it's not. It's, I just can't get over how how low the noise floor is and getting to make contact. So when the QSB was hitting some of these guys, it just didn't affect them because the signal just never went away and never disappeared into the noise. I don't know if this is normal for this antenna, but I'm excited about trying this out in multiple applications to see if it's consistent. All right, so now we're gonna try 15 meters, see if there's anything on the band or anybody. All right, so there's nobody on 15 meters, so off to 10 meters and see if I can find anybody there. All right, for this test, I think it went pretty good. I'm really excited about having only having this antenna up 25 feet in the air, and how well it works, how well it matches, and the performance. I only got to make contacts on 20 and 40 meters, but it was still a success. The fact that I didn't need a tuner with my 857 is a good thing. That's just one less piece of gear for those of us that carry radios that don't have tuners in them. So I'm looking forward to getting this antenna put up at a campsite where I can get two supports, whether they're two trees or what, and maybe I'll get to test some more configurations. Ideally, I'd like to be up in the mountains doing something like this, and I'll get to that. The trees being in the right spot to get the distance and at the right height for me to put this antenna up the way it was intended to do. And I got all the data that I needed for how the match was on all the bands at the different heights and the different configurations. So this is going to allow me to set up and know what I can set up with when I'm out camping. Hopefully this information is helping you. Let me know in the comments below. All right, one last note about the LEFS 8010 antenna. This time I'm using the camper at the 80 feet up the far end and 30 feet down here. So I've got the uh, 480 over here and a battery powered uh, running down there and I've got a solar charger hooked up to it with the solar panel 
out in the field. And I got to work a guy, ZL2, okay, Dave, in New Zealand. It was an awful lot of fun. Holy cow, for seven minutes, it was so clear. No, you were fantastic uh, into uh, the mountains of Utah. Back to you there, Dave. The mountains of Utah. Hey, that sounds neat, uh, Kevin. And um, yeah, you got that antenna up high. What, what sort of antenna is it? It's a chameleon N-fed antenna, the LEFS 8010. So it's uh, 80 through 10 meters and you don't need a tuner on it. And on uh, 20 meters, it's like practically flat. So it's 130 feet long and... Uh, you know, just running 50 watts on my battery to this thing, it obviously is working really good to reach you, uh, over. Yeah, 50 watts on your batteries, that's, um, that's great. Yes, I am familiar with those, um, uh, NFS and, um, halfway on 80 meters, so, yeah, we'll be 132 feet or something. Wow, that's great, Kevin. Mm -hmm. uh, you're, uh, you're five and eight. Uh, tremendous signal here. If you haven't made a contact like this before, it's an awful lot of fun having a QSO with someone so far away. It was kind of random how I found him on the frequency, but it was way cool. Plus, he got himself a POTA contact on top of it. Now, here are some of my final thoughts on this antenna. Now, make sure you click that like button down below if you're getting some value out of this video. And, of course, if you're new here, consider subscribing to get more videos like this. Now, using this antenna for a number of installations, whether it's portable operating or at my home or some different activations where I have the supports to put this thing way up in the air. And I use this RFI choke right up at the feed point every time I do the antenna installation. And it seems like the choke is doing what it's supposed to be doing because I never have any RFI problems with that antenna. It's easy to deploy, it's lightweight, and it's easy to put back when you're done using the line winder. That 130 foot of wire fits perfectly on this line winder and using that uh, bungee cord they have on there to wrap around and hold everything in place seems to work every time. The readings, the SWR match to the radio seems to be consistent every time I have done a deployment. And that makes me feel less like I need to take a tuner with me as a backup plan. And that's been really nice. Now using this antenna as the 10 meter to 40 meter setup is a lot nicer because you only have the 63 feet. So you means that you really only have to have a 25 foot support and use the antenna in a sloper configuration. Maybe that's all you have. You can have something on the back of your vehicle or a simple mast to put up or maybe a small tree that's nearby. And having that set up makes it easier to get on the air that way. Now, while you can use the 10 through 40 meter section and just use the 63 foot section of antenna wire, having the full 130 feet on this antenna is really going to help the performance and help the antenna work much better when you have the space to put that up. For a all-purpose multi-band wire antenna that's compact and reliable, that $225 price tag may not be that bad, especially if you're not into building antennas, but you want something that seems to be consistent, reliable, and gets you those contacts. I hope you guys got some value and some use out of seeing my different setups, the readings that I got, and how this antenna might be something that could benefit you in some way. I want to thank Chameleon Antennas for providing the LEFS 8010 for me to use and review for you guys. Make sure you click that like button down below, and if you're new here, consider subscribing to the channel. And if you want to see more videos on getting out in portable operating, click this one right here.